without further ado, Mr. Buster, you're on. Oh, okay. Well, our speaker is not a stranger to everybody, but uh, give you a little refresher on him. You know, by the way, he bought his, bought his main boss with him. His wife Donna is here today. Let's see, Jim's from Chicago and graduated from the University of Illinois as an industrial engineer in 1971. He was enabled every year with the Marine Corps from 1971 to 1978 and earned a master's in management and human relations in 1976. He is a retired Continental Airlines captain with over 28,000 flight hours. In 1997, he helped found the OV-10 Bronco Association that operates the Fort Worth Aviation Museum. The museum maintains a collection of 27 warbirds used to inspire and educate people of all ages. Jim is the chairman and executive director of the association. He is also chairman of the Tarrant County Historical Commission and helped found the Texas World War I Centennial Commemoration Group. He lives in Grapevine, Texas with his wife Donna of 43 years. And in 2016, he was recognized by the Tarrant County Historical Commission for the Museum's Aviation Preservation Programs and in 2017 received the Daughters of the American Revolution to stay a citizen award. With that, please welcome Jim and he'll please talk. Good evening, everybody. It's, uh, it's nice to be back before this group. We've got a presentation for you here tonight that's a little bit different than what, uh, what normally takes place here. Uh, we have been working for the last few years on a uh, concept for a new museum. And as we looked at uh, what has taken place in the past, we found that there were a lot of efforts that have taken place to uh, bring a regional museum here that would, uh, uh, would showcase all of these developments that have taken place here in North Texas. You know, we have 108 years of aviation history here and we have no place to showcase it other than our small museum in about 1,500 square feet in an old school building. We found over the years that uh, we could do a better job of outreach if we had better facilities, bigger facilities, and other things that we could do in terms of programming. But we wanted to go back and look and see what the what the past efforts were like and why they may have failed. And I think for a lot of you, this is gonna be a trip down memory lane. For some of you, it, uh, it may be new. But uh, the title of this is, Let's Put Aviation History in Its Proper Place. And so we go from, uh, from 1912 here, all the way up to the current with an uh, F-35. The impact of aviation here in North Texas is enormous. Now, if you've been at the museum, you've seen this cylinder, which each one of these BBs being an airplane has been built here in North Texas. It's 70,000 aircraft and counting. And the direct impact, economic impact, of those airplanes alone is a trillion dollars. And that's just for starters. You know, that isn't all of the indirect impact and all of the other things, churches, schools, houses, roads, and all of the other businesses. In fact, if we go back to 1941 when we started uh, first started to build airplanes. 70,000 airplanes is three and a half airplanes a day, every day for 78 years. And if we look at a trillion dollars, that's $35 million a day, every day for 78 years. So that's a huge impact. And you can take that direct impact and you can double it or triple it to get some idea as to what the total impact is, is on, a, on an area. So today we've got over 600,000 jobs in the Metroplex, our aviation related jobs, that's one in five. That's 20%, that's one of the highest percentages of anywhere in the United States. The other thing, and these are new numbers that uh, we've uh, just come up with, the total direct impact is $140 billion a year of aviation on North Texas. And that's just the big numbers. For instance, uh, DFW uh, provides about $44 billion a year. Alliance Airport, Alliance, $76 billion a year. The JRB is like $6 billion. That's just small pocket change. But Alliance is now producing more uh, to the economy than, uh, than DFW is. Uh, DFW last, uh, last year, 69 million passengers. They're increasing at about 7.5%. And if you heard the news last night, American Airlines and DFW are gonna put in a whole new terminal, Terminal F. And so they're already at almost 1,000 flights a day, and with that, who knows? In terms of cargo that, uh, that has moved through here, two billion pounds of cargo. 
So it's huge. It's just absolutely huge. Yet the thing that we fight at the museum is nearly 50% of the population here didn't live here 25 years ago and doesn't know about any of this. So this is the North Texas Aviation Museums. Bob just gave me a sheet. There's a lot more than this. But these are about 20 or so of all of the museums that are here locally. How many of these museums tell the story of aviation in North Texas? Just one, just the Fort Worth Aviation Museum, Bronco Association, Ford Air Controllers Museum, and the B-36. Of all of these, we are the only museum that tells the story of aviation here in North Texas, the only one. We consider ourselves the keeper of, the, of, the, uh, of our heritage here. The rest of these, all kinds of other interests, but none of them specifically to what took place here. So with that background, let's go back and take a look and see where the beginnings are of attempting to preserve the aviation history here in North Texas. And we go back to 1954. You all recognize that airplane, right? This picture was taken at Peacemaker Park at Greater Southwest International Airport. It was placed there in 1954. Most of you know the story about this airplane, right? So it was placed in 1954 and it was there until 1976. It was there for about four years after the airport closed. The airplane was heavily vandalized and there were all kinds of plans at that point in time to try to save that airplane. You know many of these stories, but not everybody does, so we're gonna go through the whole thing here. So from 1972 to 76, Greater Southwest uh, B-36 rescue effort uh, took place and attempted, uh, was one of the first attempts at a museum here to house some of the aviation history. So there's the airplane sitting at GSW and you can see they did some engine, they were did, doing some work on the airplane. Uh, I've seen various stories, but the, I understand that they were able to get one engine to start. One of the plans was to fly it over to DFW, three miles away to fly it to DFW and have it uh, be there. Another plan that came up through one of the engineers was to fly it over to Meacham Field and turn it into a flying museum at Meacham. This took years, years and years. The airplane became derelict. Like we said, it became vandalized. And essentially what happened is uh, DF, uh, G, uh, GSW closed, DFW opened. DFW eventually said, we don't want the airplane. And, uh, and the city of Fort Worth said, if you don't move it, we're gonna scrap it. So that's when, uh, when we started up with uh, the Museum of Aviation Group took over the project of moving the B-36. And that was after the Peacemaker Foundation was not able to uh, get the airplane moved. So in 76, Southwest Aerospace Museum and Aviation Heritage uh, Association got the airplane back over to the, right across the street from the Convair plant. In fact, they had a pretty impressive group of airplanes. If any of you, uh, how many of you were ever, ever at this museum or saw the museum? Number of you, right? I mean, they had some heavy iron, B-52, KC-97, B-58, uh, B-36. I still don't know how they managed to get some of those airplanes because uh, normally it would go through the Air Force, but this was not even considered a 501c3 until 83. So they had the airplanes and there was an effort being made to attempt to build a building to house the history. They were on Air Force property. Okay, still, they were on Air Force property. But eventually what took place here is Southwest Aviation Museum and the uh, Aviation Heritage Association combined. And in 1987, there was a thesis written for Texas Tech, the Southwest Aerospace Museum is a thesis statement. And it answered the question of why do we need a museum building? And that was to house the artifacts. Now I've seen some pictures showing one of the original World War I hangars was already or was there. But apparently when, the, uh, when this museum folded, that, mu uh, that building was buried uh, somewhere nearby. What they were looking at doing was a 200,000 square foot uh, building for $10 million. That's 1987, which today would be approximately $22.5 million. It wasn't gonna be fancy, but it was gonna be a building to house the museum. And then in 91, the Southwest Aerospace Museum merged with the Aviation Heritage Association. And when we started to talk to uh, Lockheed at the time uh, about things uh, that were taking place, uh, they kept on telling us about the $300,000 that they had put into this, uh, this organization to attempt to uh, start up a museum. 
So we jump around just here a little bit, but 1988, Frontiers of Flight Museum opened in the terminal building at Love Field. Again, it's kind of an eclectic museum. The, uh, the, the story is pioneers of flight and frontiers of flight, but it's not specific to North Texas. And then in 2004, they did the expansion. I want you to take a look at the shape of this building. How many of you have been to Frontiers of Flight? Most of you, some of you, okay. But of course, this is the end that's uh, kind, of the, uh, uh, kind of the discovery zone area with the 737, and then this is the big open building. But I want you to look at that, that site, or that, uh, that shape. Because in 2004, this was done after there was an attempt made to put a museum at DFW. We'll get to that in a minute. But in 1993, Aviation Heritage Association was of forms, and they were attempting to do the Aviation Heritage Museum of North Texas. It was going to be a 244,000 square foot building, $30 million, which is $52 million today. Ross Perot was on the board. In fact, he was the uh, official, um, the, celebrity, uh, the celebrity chairman for fundraising. C.R. Smith Museum was built in 93, so it was about the same time that this was all going on. Now, one of the things that's common about most of these museum efforts is this part, housing in B-36, which we're going to find as we look back over the history of these things, that was a problem that was never really solved. To house the B-36 was 50,000 square feet, four stories tall. A huge building just to house that one airplane. So in 93, AHA's preliminary architectural studies for a museum, and it was going to be at the Fort Worth Alliance Airport. Of course, Ross, Ross Perot was involved in this, and he wanted it there. Ross Perot has always wanted a museum at Alliance. To date, that obviously hasn't happened. And you know some of the stories about land being transferred, 12 and a half acres were set aside for a museum, and then the air show was done so that it could generate dollars uh, to be able to build a museum, which, actually, which, which never functioned. In 94, they went ahead and they had development plans that they, uh, that they had done, partly with people from uh, the staff at the, at the Alliance Airport. Um, and it was going to be called the Flying Machine. It was a case statement. It was Aviation Education Center of Texas. That was in 1994. That's this building. 244,000 square feet, $30 million. By 1995, in 1995, the plan was published, but by 1998, they had to revise the plan because they couldn't raise the funds. So what they did is they downsized the building to 146,000 square feet. They knocked off 1,000, 100,000 square feet, and now they're down to 12 million 600,000. $20 million today. They even looked at the plan and said, we have to raise, and they were going to do this in stages, two stages. This was going to be the, the initial development was going to be to house the B-36, and then later they were going to do the second phase. To start the first phase, they needed to raise $5.6 million. Never happened, obviously, never happened. And this was with Ross Perot involved in the museum. So uh, Ross Perot was on the Capital Campaign Committee. He was the honorary chairman. So in 2001 now, we're going from 98 to 2001, three years later, Frontiers of Flight has worked for and has acquired a TxDOT grant of about, uh, I think it was about seven and a half million dollars to do an expansion for the Frontiers of Flight Museum. Of course, when there's money on the table or money out there, people start to decide how other people should spend that money. And there was an effort generated to do the uh, Dream of Flight Museum, a museum at DFW Airport. We were on this task force. Initially, it was Frontiers of Flight, and it was the Aviation Heritage Association that was on the task force along with a lot of other, uh, along with a lot of other people from the, uh, the local area. It was going to be short duration that they had to raise the money because TxDOT and the, uh, and the loan that uh, Frontiers, or the grant that Frontiers of Flight had, they had a buy date that they had to start spending the money or they lost the whole thing. So this was kind of short-fused. We learned about it and 
said, well, why aren't all of the museums being invited in to do this, uh, participate in this uh, task force? And so they kind of grudgingly, uh, some of the members of AHA, not Frontiers of Flight because that's how we found out about it, but members of AHA kind of grudgingly allowed Front or, uh, Vintage Flying Museum and ourselves at that time, we were the Veterans Memorial Air Park and uh, B-36 to come in and participate in the, uh, in the task force. The intent was now to have even a bigger museum, 220,000 square feet for $100 million. Today that would be $145 million. Again, this is just a little bit of the idea that they had, but again, we're going to house a B-36 with a B-24, and we're going to do all these fancy things at DFW. This started and stopped within a year's time. Within less than a year, actually it was about six or eight months, this started and stopped and failed and then Frontiers of Flight went ahead and built the expansion that you see today. Now, I wanted to go back and mention this. Remember I told you to take a look at the shape of Frontiers of Flight when they did, the, did their expansion? Kind of looks like this, doesn't it? So I wonder where the idea came from. Just some of the things you find when you start looking in back into all of this stuff, right? So, after the, uh, the effort at, uh, at DFW uh, failed for a new museum, there are a number of other plans that came out as to what can we do now and what are we going to do. So one of them was in May of 2002, there was actually some interest and some plans done to do a B-36 museum at the JRB. This is when Paul Payne was the CEO out there. Uh, it was very preliminary, there were some, some sketches done, but it never went much beyond that. About the same time, a little bit later in the year, there was a concept to do a canopy and a visitor and education center at DFW. It was going to be pretty much where the visitor center is today. It was going to be estimated at about 60,000 square feet. None of the documents or literature we have really talk about the space, just that it was going to be on several acres, but that this building was going to be about 60,000 square feet. It was going to cost two and a half million dollars. And then there was also a proposal about three years later to put the, uh, put the airplane at, uh, at Meacham Field. There was talk with the Air Force Museum and what they would require to be able to put the airplane there and eventually it was denied by the Air Force Museum as being inadequate. So this is in 2005. In 2004, there's a lot of stuff going on here between 2001 and 2006, 2008. But in 2004, we had been part of a group here it was called NOTAM, North Texas Association of Museums, and as the a Veterans Memorial Air Park, we started to talk to Vintage Flying Museum and the B-36 group and some of the others and said, why don't we talk to the city about having one combined museum, maybe kind of a mall of museums idea, so everybody can tell their stories, but we can be in one location. And so we approached City Council and then the Aviation Advisory Board, and two years later, the city established the Mayor's Aviation Museum Task Force. I was told when I was, <laughs> when I was on the committee that I was going to be the Sergeant at Arms, and I was to there to make sure that AHA and the B-36 Peacemaker Museum played nice together. Those were my directives from, uh, uh, from the city. So we went through a period of almost two years of looking at different plans, gathering history, looking at other things that took place. Uh, Lord Cultural was brought in and uh, they were paid by, uh, by some of the oil and gas uh, money that was, uh, that was coming into the city from the airports. Spent about $250,000 on a uh, strategic master plan. Now, in 2006, we were formed, and the B-36 Peacemaker at GSW was transferred for the, that was at the, uh, at GSW, was now at the plant, was then transferred to Pima. So in the process of this committee and deciding what we were going to do, the centerpiece of the museum was lost. And you all know some of the stories on that. So the strategic plan had to be reworked, and in 2008 it came out for the Fort Worth Aviation Museum prepared by the Mayor's Task Force. Draft final proposal, 181,000 square feet. A little bit smaller than some of the others, but at $115 million, which is $137 million today. 
Again, this was the, these were designed to be big museums. This one was even going to be big enough to house the B-36. Even though the B-36 was gone, there was talk about we can get it back. And this is what the concept was after the B-36 was gone. This is the control tower at Alliance Airport. And the idea was to do this ring around where the control tower is with having display areas out here and out on the ramp. Not many people have seen that picture. So in 2004, to generate local interest in the, uh, in the new museum, the Fort, Worth Air, the Fort Worth Air and Space Museum Foundation, and this is their logo, uh, designed a, an exhibit. And the exhibit was called Ascent, When Dreams Defy Reality, and it, was, uh, it, it finally took place over at the Museum of Science and History. Leading up to this, AHA, the Aviation Heritage Association, essentially dissolved, and the funds that they had, which was about $900,000, went to the Fort Worth Air and Space Museum Foundation. That money was supposed to be used for this initial exhibit with the intent that this exhibit potentially would travel around the country and generate dollars from the traveling effort to be able to pay the cost of the exhibit, but also to generate interest here in North Texas in having this new museum. They hired a fundraiser who, uh, who was very proud of the fact that he said, I can raise $2 million uh, in just a couple of months. After a year or more, he was lucky to have raised about $150,000. At no point in time when they built this exhibit, which was really quite extensive, covered about 5,500 square feet, 6,000 square feet at the museum. Although there were 46 different uh, companies that were exhibited and shown uh, in this exhibition, there was not one dollar of sponsorship money that was asked for. Actually, they asked for money afterwards when they were in debt and nobody would uh, provide any funding. The city did. The city bailed out the foundation with a loan of about $2 million. The intent was, or the thought process was with city council, and the story that they were told is that this exhibit will be able to go national and within a period of a year or two years, we'll be able to get the money back and we'll be able to repay the loan. Anybody have any ideas to where that exhibit traveled to? Exactly, it traveled to a warehouse down on the south side of Fort Worth, is where it went. It was a great trade show, but so many of the items in there, for instance, um, uh, an engine from the Osprey, was loaned by Bell simply for the exhibition, but was not, uh, was not going to be part of the traveling exhibit. So in many, in many cases, if you actually saw this or participated in it, it was really more like a trade show than it was an exhibition of aviation here in North Texas. By uh, December of 2011, the Fort Worth uh, Air and Space Museum Foundation ceased operations after defaulting on the loan to the city. The city at that point in time was ready to literally put dump trucks up to, the, up to the warehouse and pile it all in there and put it all in landfill. And so we approached them with a project that we referred to as this Historic Aviation Preservation Project. The intent was we said, if you're going to throw it out, wouldn't you like to know what you're throwing out? Let us catalog the items. So we took over the old uh, the, uh, portions of the office spaces at the terminal building at Beecham, and over a period of about six or eight months, we cataloged over 3,500 pieces that had been in the collection. Things that had been donated to AHA 20 and 25 years prior. And so there was a body of, of, of items. So at least, the, uh, at least the city knew what they had. The city was hopeful then that once they had this list that they were gonna be able to, to go out and have it appraised and hopefully be able to recoup their funds. The appraiser, after thanking us for doing his work of cataloging everything, came back with appraised value of all the collection at $125,000. So the city once again was uh, not going to get its money back. A lot of the items that were in the collection were, had been purposely built for the exhibition and things like that. So most of the collection was dispersed. Some of it's now at the archives. Uh, some of it came to uh, us at the museum and much of that is now on display. For instance, at uh, TCC, a lot of the artwork is at TCC. Some of the offices here at, uh, at Meacham kept, uh, kept bits and pieces of it here and there. But essentially it was dispersed other than some of the pieces that we control right now, like the A-12 mock-up and uh, the BT-13, as well as some other documents and things like that. 
the A12, for instance, uh, we have been trying for a number of years now to try to get some kind of a cover over it and preserve it because it's not getting any better sitting outside the way it does. Uh, we went to uh, Meacham uh, not, too, uh, not too long ago, a couple years ago actually, uh, and uh, to the aviation department and said, will you do anything to help us preserve this thing or then be able to uh, do something? And they said, no, and if you don't want it, we'll dispose of it. That's the only piece of that history of here in Fort Worth of the A-12 is the mock-up. So we continue to work to do something and we're getting very close to getting the wings on it. And once we do that, we're gonna cocoon the airplane. So now in 2009, I know I'm jumping back and forth here a little bit, but it's necessary to try to keep the topics together. In 2009, Jim Cavanaugh at the Cavanaugh Flight Museum was proposing a, uh, an alliance expansion project. He had a group called uh, FRD, uh, which is Freeman Ryan Design out of Australia, come in and do a proposal for them for the North Texas Aviation Heartland Museum, a vision for the future. So this is a group that we've gotten to know pretty well since then, but they've done museums all over the country. Right now they're doing the SAC Museum in Omaha. Uh, they did a design for the uh, um, Commemorative Air Force here in Dallas. Uh, they've done a, a, number of different, a number of different things, the Railroad Museum in Dallas. So we know these people very well and they do some really, really great, innovative, interactive stuff. But they put together this proposal for, for Kavanaugh. And the intent was that he was working with the, the Perot Group and this museum, the Kavanaugh Museum, was gonna to move to Alliance and it was gonna be a flying museum at Alliance. Again, Perot wanted to have a museum at Alliance. Kavanaugh decided never to proceed with the project and he stayed in Addison. In 2011, after we had gotten to know the people from FRD and after we had done, we started to do in 2011 after the Fort Worth Air and Space Museum Foundation folded and ceased operations, we started to look at what we had and what we could do in terms of design proposals or expansion proposals where we were at, where we still are today. So in 2011, after looking at a number of different things, we looked at doing something similar to a uh, uh, C.R. Smith Museum and those kinds of things. We started to look at, and we went back and worked with FRD, and we kind of reworked what they had done for Kavanaugh for the North Texas Aviation Heartland Museum. So the intent was, and this is our present location now, was to utilize about 11 acres and build out the museum where we are but take that, that space that we use for parking for hops and props out towards the back. So we could display all the airplanes, we could have a big museum up here, parking lot and all the rest of the, uh, all the, rest of the things. This was a 2011 design uh, that we started out with. And then so using the FRD Kavanaugh design plus concepts from GFF Architects of Dallas, a uh, new proposal for a North Texas Aviation Heartland Museum was developed and proposed. We brought this to the attention of the city and the biggest issue they had when we started to talk to them because we were going to do a presentation to city council was who said you could use that land? And we said this is ink on paper, nobody said anything, there's been no commitments made. They made such a fuss we said fine and we didn't do the brief. So, after more years of work, after more years of working on proposals, after more work at looking at what other people have done, not only here but all around the world, we're starting to look at what we're referring to as an initiative on the North Texas Aviation Museum. NOTAM is a working title. Some people like it, some people don't think it's very good. But that's not important. What is important is that in January of 2019, uh, we started to talk to uh, TCC and Alliance. Uh, there are a number of, well, here within the United States, there are 450 what are referred to as academic museums, which is a combination of a college, a university, and a museum of some sort. A lot of them are natural history museums or art museums, but there are a number of other types. So what we started to look at, and then we started looking around the world, we found that what we were proposing was a partnership between TCC and ourself and Alliance Airport, and it would be the only academic museum associated with an aviation museum, aviation school, at an airport in the world. Only one. The heart of it is this, this portion right here, which is actually a, uh, a science center. 
Now, what we proposed is to try to recreate some of the landmarks that are gone. So we looked at doing a series of two or three uh, recreations of World War I hangars. It could be used for individual things, whether one could be an event hangar, another one could be a restoration hangar, another one we were talking with a group, uh, uh, an RAF Foundation group out of Dallas that thought they'd like to do one just as a, as a kind of a uh, Duxford here in the United States. But we've talked to a number of different people. The heart of it is this. Because the idea with the school is that this building would contain classrooms, auditoriums, restaurants, display area, workspace, galleries that TCC presently does not have. And the idea would be to share the space. When they need space in the evenings, the museum would be closed so we could do some combined efforts. There are a lot of benefits to us combining efforts with them. Hillwood, again, has said, well, we'll provide land as long as you provide a high, a high profile design and high profile backers. And so that's kind of where we are. So in, uh, in February, I believe it was February, it may have been March, we signed a letter of agreement with TCC. And that letter of agreement is that we are formally have a partnership with uh, TCC to provide programming and combine efforts at, uh, uh, at educational programs. TCC does not have a good outreach program to the community. Their attitude is we fill all of our classrooms, we don't need to go out and generate more interest. Our intent with them was we'll be the big end of the funnel and talk to all of the schools and all the people in the area and generate an interest in aviation and then we can funnel them in through the school. Because the intent with the Science Center is to be able to have, uh, have opportunities for people to experience flight in any number of different ways. And there have been lots of concepts for this. Uh, has anybody been to the USS Midway Museum out in San Diego? Okay. The hangar deck is full of what? Simulators, right? So we could do simulators. We could do zip lining. We could do any number of different things to provide people an opportunity for flight. So we've got a new business model for this as opposed to normal, uh, normal museum business models that we, uh, we think will be successful and help derive earned income as opposed to just looking for f philanthropic uh, endeavors. This, uh, this museum in total, the uh, Science Center would be about 50,000 square feet and the other buildings would would uh, comprise uh, 20 to 30,000 square feet. One of the things that we found over the years in our studies is that a normal history museum, like what we are right now, or what uh, the Military Museum of Fort Worth is down in the stockyards, and some of those types of museums, is that they will normally generate on average about 40,000 visitors a year. A science center, on the other hand, generates on average 240,000 visitors a year. So this would be a destination where people would come not only for a day, but potentially for more than a day. And it would fit in with all of the other things that are here in the local area in terms of the stockyards or uh, you know, the other cultural uh, activities and events here locally. So this is what's been proposed. I can tell you that we have talked to TCC about this uh, with, the, uh, with the president of Northwest Campus and, uh, and her response to all of this after we, uh, we looked at it is this is viable, we're gonna take this to the chancellor. We talked to the people who are the, uh, the real estate development people within, the, uh, within Tarrant County College and uh, the response to them was this makes sense and we're going to, at some point here in time, take it to the chancellor for his view. He sees a lot of proposals. The proposal here that's attractive to them is that this would be built on land that's at Alliance Airport that TCC owns, but they would not be putting any money into the operation. They'd be providing land and we would have to go out and fundraise. And the Perot Group is willing to come in and help, but only after we've shown a good effort at being able to generate funds from other sources. So this is just a little bit of a, uh, a recap so you can kind of get an idea of the different efforts that have taken place since 87 and considering that we go back to 1954. So since 1954, we've been attempting to have a museum here and so far there still is not, other than the little one that we have at Meacham, we do not have a substantial museum here that can really do the outreach to the community. Boeing and Airbus have both done studies that have been released within the last year that say over the next 20 years there will be a shortfall in pilots, cabin crew members, technicians, and ground support people of nearly one million people worldwide. 
So a museum like this can do a lot towards bringing these people in, generating their interest in aviation, and getting them into a place like TCC where they can be trained as part of the workforce. Any questions about any of this stuff? It's just kind of a breakdown so you can see all of the, all the things we've talked about so far. So how are we gonna do this? Well, number one, what we found is the reasons all of the others failed have been essentially for two reasons. Number one, the B-36 and what it was gonna to take to maintain that, keep the airplane here and then house it and, uh, and restore it. And I know a lot of you have done work on that airplane. So that part of the equation isn't here. That, that solves one of the problems. In fact, most of those efforts, if you looked at them, centered the attention of the museum on the B-36. There's only one single airplane successful museum in the world. Does anybody know which one that is? No, nope. single airplane. The museum is built around one airplane. No, nope, not the Spruce Goose. No, nope, not the Spruce Goose. The Mosquito Museum in, in England. It's the only single, single airplane successful museum in the world. So what we're looking at here is we don't have the B-36 to be concerned with. It's part of the story. It's not the whole story. The other thing is they've never been able, nobody's ever been able to raise substantial funds. They weren't even able to raise five and a half million dollars to break ground back in the late 90s. So that's of concern. We need to figure out a way to be able to generate dollars. So one of the things we started to look at was in 1924, uh, Eamon Carter started what was referred to as the, the Fort Worth Aviation Club. It was about 400 local civic and business leaders, and the intent was like the Oilman's Club and the Cattlemen's Club, and what they were gonna do was just promote aviation. So these people bought into the club, promoting aviation. By 1925, they had, uh, the city had purchased Meacham, which was named in 27. But then Meacham Airport became the hub for all airmail contract service within the entire southwest U.S. It was already coming here on the trains, so Eamon Carter and this group got to ensure that all of the airmail also came through Meacham Airport. That was one of the ways that commerce started to build up and aviation started to build up here. And then they started to do the passenger service with the, uh, with the Travel Air 5000 and some of those where they were going back and forth between Meacham and up to Chicago. That was one of the bigger routes, but also east and west. So they did that in 1924 and it was very successful. So what we decided this year, in March of this year, is that we are rechartering the, the, uh, the Fort Worth Aviation Club for the purposes of raising the funds that we're gonna need, development funds that we're gonna need to move this uh, museum expansion forward. So the intent here is an annual mem membership will support these items, providing new corporate structure, design concept studies, catalog, preserve, and maintain our collection, provide educational programming, develop uh, exhibits and curation, upgrade and expand interactive exhibits, and build an endowment to secure the future. What we're looking to do here is raise between $100,000 and $300,000. We know, for instance, that a development plan alone is gonna cost us, at, at the very, very bottom end, $50,000. Normally it's going to cost us seventy-five dollars to $100,000 for a development plan, but that is essentially a blueprint with everything you're going to need for what the building's going to look like, where it's going to be, what the collection is going to do, what you're going to do in terms of exhibits and the rest of that type of thing. And that's a project that's going to take anywhere from six to nine months or a year. Our, law, our lease at Meacham is up in 2023. We've been on the second or third or the fourth extension, and we have worked with the aviation department all of the 10 years that we have been there trying to get a long-term lease. Because as we've told management within the aviation department, we can't attract dollars when all we can show them is a five-year lease. They don't understand that. When we talked about wanting a longer lease, they said, show us the money for a museum and we'll sign you, we'll sign you up on a 40-year lease. Problem is, you're not gonna generate dollars from the people who can support one of these kinds of things when you tell them, if we get the money, they'll give us a longer release. Right now, we're only on a five-year lease. So we have to move forward with these plans, otherwise, we have an uncertain future at Meacham. The airport has already told us that they're not gonna be extending our lease beyond 2023. We can probably work something with city council, um, 
Carlos Flores is on our board, so we think that we can probably get into a month by month, year by year, but still we don't want to plan on that as a, as a way to build our future. So this is what we're proposing, and I've got brochures here for anybody who'd like them. We're going to ask you to join the, uh, the Fort Worth Aviation Club. I've done this presentation to a couple of other groups uh, this, this week. So you're the third one to see this in, uh, in, in the first week. So what we've got is a pamphlet here on the Fort Worth Aviation Club. We're looking at corporate members as well as individual members. Right now you can either sign up and become an active member or pledges or whatever support you can do or help us get in the door to people that you think might be able to help us move this plan forward because we don't know everybody. And you can throw out names to me and I can tell you what we've already heard from certain groups. Who thinks we should go to Lockheed? Does anybody know what Lockheed's answer is? We don't support mom and pop operations. We only support national, uh, national museums and health and welfare issues. So that's been their response. Or we put $300,000 into uh, the, the uh, Southwest Aerospace Museum and we got nothing back from that. Bell helps us with some small grants, but Bell is not gonna be a player until we find other people that are gonna help us. So we are looking at the cost of this new museum of being roughly between 30 and 50 million dollars, depending on what we do. The initial portion of it is going to cost about 12 million dollars to get started if we phase it in. We are going to have to move the museum we presently have to a new, uh, to a new location. And Alliance is the place that we're, we're, we're planning to go. So it's going to take us approximately $12 million to establish facilities there and move up to Alliance and take that over. And then the rest of it will come in a, in a second phase. So we're going to encourage each and every one of you here, because you're the choir, to take one of the pamphlets with you and consider helping us by joining the Fort Worth Aviation Club and helping us put aviation in its proper place. This is one other gentleman who's going to be helping us. His name is Ralph Buffano. Ralph uh, was involved in one of the earlier, uh, earlier efforts. Uh, Ralph has worked on hundreds of aviation museums. He's been in the aviation or in the museum development business for about 38 years. But these are some of the museums that he has been working on most recently. Atlanta Air and Space is new. Maxwell, he's been working on that one. Lone Star Flight Museum, he was uh, he was the person who helped develop uh, and establish their new museum down there. And Ralph is a good friend. He was here not too long ago. Uh, some of the plans that we've looked at from the, from the 90s, the AHA plans and some of the others, all of them have good elements. Even the Southwest Aerospace Museum has some good elements in it, and we can borrow from a lot of those things. So we don't have to, we don't really have to go out and prove that there's sufficient people here because in 93 and 94, they felt there were sufficient people for a 181,000 square foot um, or a 240,000 square foot museum that was going to cost 30,000, 30 million dollars. They felt there were sufficient number of people here. Well, I can guarantee if there are sufficient people here in 93, there's more than enough people here now with the growth that's taken place over the years. So that's our presentation and we're going to ask you to help us put aviation in its proper place, a proper museum to be able to preserve the stories, uh, preserve our heritage and tell the stories that many of you were participated in. So who's got questions? Yes, sir. I would say that's pretty, pretty much the case. Uh, I got a chance to go and look at it in, uh, in Arizona a few months ago for a conference. It's outside. I mean, the, the Pima Air Museum has got about 350 airplanes, uh, and uh, B-36 is obviously one of the bigger ones. Uh, it's outside, and frankly, I don't know that we would ever get it back from there. It would be an enormously expensive. Second question. Yeah. What, what is the position of Fort Worth, the city of Fort Worth towards this? Have they just kind of put their hands off or what? Because I know they put hands off on the B-58. Well, yeah, the B-58, the last minute decided, I mean, literally the last minute they decided, they changed their mind and decided they didn't want to help. So we lost the B-58. Uh, there are many people within city government who are still, still hurting over the $2 million, uh, the $2 million loan. 
And so a lot of people have just said they're going. The city is going to wash its hand if the if uh, if the, the people of Fort Worth want to want an aviation museum, they're going to have to support it and build it themselves. That's kind of the attitude. Although I can tell you from some of the muse- uh, meetings that we've had, some of the st- uh, strategy meetings that we've had. We feel fairly certain that if we can find the right people and the right groups and generate some amount of the money, that Lockheed will come in with some money, Bell will come in with some money, the city will come in with some money because they're not going to want to look bad because they didn't come in. But we've got a lot of work to do before we get to that point.